I got a comment, my favourite in a long time. The more I watch your newer short videos, the more they all support your LHFE 2.3 video, where Victor Hugo talks about how the people of his time were destroying the old buildings. They had the technology to build imitations, which you are demonstrating now in your short videos. Spot on. Thank you. LHFE 2.3, where I discuss Victor Hugo, was my way in to presenting my revised thesis and I planned to ease things as I went, slowly debunking my previous claims and refining my arguments. But it just was not feasible in terms of writing. My form was suffering too much, so I crashed it down. I think it's a good time to present my revised hypothesis in a series of short videos, starting with the overall plot. This hypothesis relies on the viewer understanding that structures between the medieval era to the present day were very possible for those in the history books to build. By accepting this, it opens up a whole new avenue of investigation in terms of historical erasure and fabrication. A quick caveat, I do acknowledge that there are impossible structures by what the narrative tells us. This is primarily the megalithic stuff, the pyramids, Baalbek, etc. I will reference these when appropriate, but they are slightly outside the scope of my current research. My focus is on the end of the Middle Ages, where I think a great population reset occurred and what I call the Great Transition, or Age of Transition, the period from 1400 to the 20th century. So let's start with the broader, more general plot, it most likely will not make immediate sense, but I will be following up with further short videos that explore aspects of it in more detail. So do not take it as truth. My objective is to try and turn the hypothesis into a theory, with a lot of supporting evidence in LLG and these short videos. If I need to make future adjustments and refinements to the thesis, then I will. The Middle Ages came to a tumultuous end with deliberately planned famine, plague, revolt and war. The world fell into temporary darkness at the hands of one of the most fatal depopulation events in history. It is estimated that the Black Death alone killed over half of the European and North African population and over a third of the Middle East. It may have been more. Much of the social, economic and technological progression achieved in the Middle Ages suffered tremendously and came to a halt. In other words, there was a great population reset. The word reset means to return to a former condition. But in that darkness, a light began to stir and shine brighter and brighter. The light of renaissance. Renaissance means rise again or born again. Humanity began to recover, but something had forever changed. They did not repair and restore what was lost, but began to slowly build back better, in a very different direction. A direction that would dictate the course of history until the present day. A brave new age began, and the old medieval world began to fall slowly into obscurity. Why? Because during the traumatic upheaval at the end of the Middle Ages, an entity, a shadow syndicate, or synarchy if you will, rose again, seized power, and began implementing a plan that is still in action today. This entity has one goal, world domination. It is a malignant force, serving only itself and its agenda. It is the empire above all empires, Shadow Rome. It moves very slow and cunning like a snake, often hidden, shedding its skin wherever it goes. The characters that make up the anatomy of this entity, this creature, are not easily identified, but it does have a very distinctive modus operandi. It operates by infiltrating nation states. It uses large-scale staged events to further its agenda. It has orchestrated these events since the end of the Middle Ages and continues to do so today. Every time it does, the plan slowly advances. One of its key trademarks is its religion, its worship of the light in all forms. Especially the celestial light. 
Sometimes it will stage events that unfold like a human dramatization and personification of the movements of the celestial light above us. The eclipse is its crowning chess move. It will plunge the world into darkness. One ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. Only to then bring back the light, the saviours and their solutions that society embraces with open arms. Each time this happens, this entity slowly advances its agenda. When this entity initially rose to power, it had successfully plunged medieval society into the dark, famine and plague, and then restored the light with the renaissance. It was one of the biggest dark to light eclipse moves in history a great population reset. Humanity has been under the might and rule of this entity and its colonial prowess since then. The Renaissance marked the beginning of the Age of Transition, where the world shifted into modernity. For the first 400 years of this entity's reign, its primary goal was the implementation of globalization and in turn globalism. By connecting the world through trade, technology, religion, science and so on. It achieved this through infiltration, colonialism, slavery, industrialization and war. Not everyone accepts change. Competitors for power arise. This entity had to protect itself and conquer with military and imperial force. It had to divide and conquer. It devised new methods of defense and attack. What is a star? Celestial light. Who worships the light? Your masters. Libertus, the soul invictus. Its other central primary objective was to erase and replace the history of the old medieval world. And one of the key ways it achieved this was by using architecture as a weapon of historical erasure. During the Renaissance, this entity devised a new style of architecture, named the New Classical. It did this by extracting stylistic elements of European Romanesque, Gothic, Middle Eastern and Moorish architecture and fusing them together. It has concealed this and I plan to show you how. This entity then used this New Classical style and pseudo stonemason reconstruction techniques to begin replacing the old medieval world and in many instances fabricating history. And it did so at a rapid pace. It began in Florence and then spread across Europe and then the rest of the world. If architecture ever held an alternative or esoteric function it was lost and suppressed here during the Renaissance. If America has a greater hidden history, it was lost here. If Britain has a greater hidden history, it was lost here. This entity deliberately delayed the Industrial Revolution by 300 to 400 years, perhaps out of a fear of losing its position of power, perhaps to first let the population recover from the Black Death. The technology of the Industrial Revolution and its powerful potential did exist prior to the 1700s, but in a different form. When it was ready, this entity unleashed the industrial technology of steam power and used it to further strengthen its grip over the world through globalization and overt colonialism. It also used this technology to finalize its editing and erasure of medieval history. It continued to use a new classical style as a weapon of erasure, demolishing old sites and replacing them in this style. But it also seized upon the Gothic style to finalize its agenda. This was primarily undertaken through two operations, the Victorian Restoration and the Gothic Revival. The first consisted of restoring and thus editing destroying and replacing most of the remaining medieval structures in Europe. The second operation, the Gothic Revival, worked by spreading the Gothic style in the form of new structures all over the world. Why? 
to instill and solidify in the minds of contemporary and future generations a preconception of what the medieval world looked like. It also used a new classical and gothic revival as a means of cultural colonialism, subjugating entire nations to its own cultural expression, changing their religion, histories, education, mythology and so on. This does not belong in India. The classical here does not belong in Singapore. It does not reflect their national expression. Here they are building a huge classical edifice in South Africa. Does this carry an African cultural inflection? Does it even belong in Britain? What about America? Eradicating heritage characterizes this entire period. The new classical is the architectural expression of this globalist entity and its colonial monomania. Does this mean every classical or gothic structure built during the age of transition served the agenda to erase what came before? No, but a big portion of them did. The builders, the brickmakers, the stonemasons, the decorators, the carpenters, the labourers themselves were some of the most talented, hard-working and incredible artists of all time. They were our ancestors and their legacy is immortalised in these structures. Men, women and children. Without a very sly and sinister form of child slavery, there would have been no industrial revolution. Empires are built on the backs of slaves. The workers, both free and enslaved, were the muscle and talent. The Brunelleschis, the Palladios, the Wrens, the Gilbert Scots. These were the visionary directors, the governing hands that ensured structures were executed to certain specifications, ensuring that when they replaced or restored whatever was left of the old medieval world, that nothing remained that could betray their master's liberal rewriting of its history. This goal was achieved at the end of the 19th century, with developments in artificial and mass-produced templated stone. I think this is why we do not build like this today. We can do it, and sometimes an incredible cathedral or mosque will go up. But traditional architecture served its function, replacing what came before, or as Victor Hugo said, as he lamented the way the new classical had replaced his old medieval Paris. We wish to erase it all fully from our history. In April of 2019, Notre Dame Cathedral caught fire and burned for hours. It marked the 666th year since the Black Death ended, a fitting anniversary. It also marked the beginning of the next phase of this entity's plan. We are living through that right now. It looks like a fourth industrial revolution is coming. That's the plot. So there is continuity with this episode, but it's not compatible with the Tartaria impossible structures hypothesis. My current research is focused on locating moments of significant change and potential historical erasure in the age of transition, which I will present on and try to evidence in these two playlists. In the next video, I'm going to demonstrate, with specific examples, some different ways of exploring architecture, historical crisis events, and historical fabrication in light of this hypothesis. Keep well, and have a good day.